make sure voters of the state are aware uh, of their rights uh, in terms of their ability to cast a ballot in this upcoming election, which is now only 26 days away, but who's counting? Um, and I'm, I'm grateful to the Attorney General for his support. Uh, you know, we work very closely together to make sure not only do we provide access to the ballot box here in New Mexico, but that uh, every voter knows what their rights are and what their abilities are with regard to how, where, and when they can cast their ballot. Um, so uh, with that, you know, we, we partnered the last time around in 2020 as well uh, to provide a similar voter advisory to the public, and we wanted to continue that work this year. Um, as you know, threats to election workers have increased in recent and election administrators around the country also have concerns that bad actors might attempt to interfere with this year's general election. Um, and so though we have no indications at this time of any actions that might adversely affect New Mexico's election, it is essential that the public has as much awareness as possible. That's why we are issuing this advisory today, to ensure the public has important information about the election and that they understand the many ways New Mexicans can cast their ballot and the many safeguards in place that protect our votes and the administration of New Mexico's elections. This is part of my office's ongoing efforts to combat, to combat election administration, of course, in cooperation with the Attorney General's office and to ensure that voters have the facts. Clear information about how to vote, what to expect when voting is essential to increasing voter, excuse me, yeah, when voting is essential to increasing voter confidence in our elections, and I hope this advisory helps for that. The advisory underscores the fact that voter intimidation and coercion and discriminatory conduct, as well as obstruction and interference at the polls, is illegal under federal and New Mexico law. The Attorney General will say more about this in just a minute. The advisory includes information about dates and deadlines for the 2022 general election, how to vote using a mail-in ballot, what to expect when voting in person, information on who exactly is allowed to be in a polling place, and information about prohibited activities, things you cannot do at a polling place and at secured ballot drop box locations. As a reminder, you can use nmvote.org for all the information you need to learn about and get ready for the general election. View your sample ballot, request your mail-in ballot, find polling locations, and much more. So I appreciate you all covering this today and making sure your viewers and readers have the information about our elections. And now I will turn it over to Attorney General Valderas for a few minutes, and then I think we can take some questions. So thank you, thank you Mr. Attorney General. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for being here uh, this afternoon. Um, Citizens have a right uh, to vote, and it is our obligation and our goal to um, set the right tone at the top that we uh, <coughs> fully support free elections, free participation, and most importantly, we are trying to eradicate any uh, coercion, threat, or intimidation into this process. I, as an attorney general, have uh, both had the uh, experience of prosecuting uh, election fraud in the state of New Mexico but also investigating issues such as fake electors and often have, uh, have had to litigate uh, issues like ballot box availability. And so we are trying to be proactive to ensure that we have a successful and safe election. And finally, uh, we also have partnered with local law enforcement that uh, we want to keep poll workers safe, we want voters uh, to feel comfortable, and we also have an election protection unit here at the Attorney General's office. And we're asking to partner with citizens, community leaders, and all communities uh, in a nonpartisan fashion that they can contact my office at 1 844 255 9210 uh, if any citizen, poll worker, uh, or local law enforcement official feels that um, that the election in some way has been manipulated uh, or um, impacted in the negative way. So um, with that, I, we can now stand for a few questions. Thank you. Thank you. 
But what are some of the major changes you're doing at this election cycle versus in 2020 that viewers will be able to notice when they go to polling place? I, I don't think we have a whole lot of major changes. I think the, the point of the advisory is to remind folks about what what is actually permitted and what is not, but, but more importantly for voters to know their rights. So again, while not much has changed, I think we also want to acknowledge the times that we are living in and the political challenges that we are working under, uh, and just to make sure that folks know that they have the right to vote uh, freely with no intimidation or coercion uh, and that if they do experience these types of activities, to make sure they let our offices know, and, and particularly the, the hotline that Attorney General Valderas uh, mentioned. Yeah, and, and to respond to that question as well, we have always partnered with an election protection unit where even I've had special agents consistently monitor elections, and this was uh, from the first year that I took office. And so while well, those uh, approaches have not changed, I have a uh, sense that we get more questions now from poll workers and citizens in respective communities. There are hot spots in New Mexico at this time where we are taking an increased level of questions and there's expressing uh, concerns. But in terms of our approach and law enforcement and the regulatory entity, we, uh, we, we've had a model in place for, for many years now. Could you give an example of something that voters might want to be uh, on the lookout for, like, um, I, I, yeah, 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 go ahead. <laughs> um, I think we take a lot of questions uh, surrounding the use of firearms, and so I'm cautioning, uh, uh, I'm a pro-Second Amendment uh, official, but I'm also uh, pro-law enforcement, and so law enforcement will be vigilant in terms of how uh, firearms are uh, either utilized uh, or whether we spot firearms near a polling site. That is a, a special consideration that uh, we want timely communication and we will uh, respond in a timely manner and we coordinate with local law enforcement. So the use of firearms for me increase the level of risk uh, and, and would require an immediate response. You mean displaying a firearm, or can you bring a firearm into it? Yeah, I don't want to get into the judgment of, of okay. what is displayed versus aggressive use or purpose. Uh, there are regulations both that allow the carrying of firearms and laws, but there are also laws in place that you cannot use a firearm to intimidate, coerce, or threaten. So that gray area that you're referencing is something that would be treated case by case and would promptly be investigated. And, and I will just say, Dan, another example that I think we are uh, concerned about and, and, and haven't seen evidence of yet, uh, but you know, this sort of notion of policing of, uh, let's say, our, our secured monitored containers to drop mail-in ballots is something that we've you know, heard through social media, uh, and other venues that might be something that happens. So, so envision, if you will, like, you know, folks just sort of camping out around a, a, a secured monitor drop box, sort of with the intent of documenting, you know, who's going there, who's dropping ballots, et cetera. And you know, while this is a, a public and transparent process, we also have to be concerned about the intimidation factor. Um, that folks might feel concerned that they can't approach that drop box, they cannot return their ballot pursuant to state law, and we want to make sure that those types of intimidation activities are not happening as well. Just to follow up, is, is that allowed? Um, in other words, if, if I'm someone who is so inclined, can I put a gun on my shoulder or my hip and stand within you know 25 feet of a ballot drop box to, to do my own monitoring? I'll address the perimeter and then I'll hand it over to the Attorney General. So a, a drop box is the same as a polling place under state law. So there is a hundred foot uh, perimeter around that um, that prevents people from sort of congregating outside of what would be a normal, you know, uh, let's say there's one located in a strip mall or at, in front of a county building. Of course you're permitted to, to walk by and do your daily activities, but if you're sort of staking it out, 
and particularly if you're brandishing a firearm and I'll again let the Attorney General address that you know that that's when that perimeter is going to come into place yeah it's a, it is a fact, fact question there are um, you, you do have a right to conceal a weapon uh, there's lawful uh, lawful uh, um, there are lawful uh, uses to carrying a firearm, so it would just be a fact question at this point. Particular to that circumstance. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Um, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so voter intimidation can come in many forms. Can you talk about when a voter has to call into the hotline? Like at what point does it become too much? Yeah, I, so I really think it's, uh, you know, citizen-based, so some individuals, if they feel intimidated, uh, they have an immediate right to complain, uh, not only to those poll workers, but to, to give us a call. Oftentimes that's a gray area, but um, really the, the holder of uh, how an individual feels is intimidated, of course, really those things should be investigated and we should follow up on those. But generally any citizen that feels that they're being intimidated or interfered with in their process to vote, they should contact us. For, this is probably more for the secretary, but um, I saw in uh, Dan's paper this morning that um, <laughs> there was, paper. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure if he <laughs> sold the ad, but, but um, regardless, uh, there's this group that Lara Logan has been going on tour with that has an event on Saturday at um, one an Albuquerque hotel. How do you deal with this kind of information? I was on a conference call this morning with federal officials saying that they are really leaning on local officials to um, uh, combat maybe false narratives, mis or disinformation, that sort of thing. What's your view on events like that and, and how you or county clerks can, can deal with this? Sure, well, as I, I'm sure the Attorney General would agree, you know, they have a First Amendment right to convene and to, to say whatever they want to say about the election process. As we know from just tremendous amounts of information that we've uh, been apprised of over the last couple of years, they are likely to continue to spread lies, mis and disinformation about the election process um, at such a convention. Now, at the end of the day, our job is to make sure that we're letting folks know what the truth and what the facts are uh, about the election process, which is, of course, part and parcel of why we're issuing this advisory. But I will also say we, on our Secretary of State website, have a rumor versus reality uh, page where we are combating those uh, election lies, mis and disinformation. And so for folks who maybe become aware of a particular allegation or concern, um, again, you know, to our knowledge, these are all baseless and evidence, uh, lack of evidence-based uh, allegations, please visit our website to try to find the facts. Uh, and so that is, you're correct, Matt, our obligation is to make sure folks are aware of the, of the true information with regard to the election process. Megan Wolf with the, um, I think it was with Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Yeah, mm -hmm. she had said that um, oftentimes after events like this or whatever, she will see um, they will get an uptick in similar questions from voters just asking about this particular thing. Do you can you corroborate that? I mean, do you get the same thing where you start to see a question pop up on social media and then all of a sudden? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we're 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 not immune. We're we're in a sort of global communication reality now. And so, um, you know, particularly here in New Mexico, if these types of events occur, we do uh, therefore anticipate these questions arising. You know, when we start to see a critical mass of a similar type of question, that's when we put it on the website, on the rumor versus reality site. But again, this is also an opportunity if a voter has that kind of concern or question to either contact our office or to, to even just contact the hotline that the Attorney General is providing to, to raise those questions as well. And then our offices can jointly uh, investigate if necessary and provide information. Any other questions? Um, last in the last election cycle, were there any instances of voter fraud that the attorney general's office or prosecuted or pursued? We uh, the previous cycles we have um, prosecuted some voter fraud in Rio County. Um, most recently, 
the last election cycle, we won the back end threatening litigation of Tarot County to certify those results, and so we were involved with the Secretary of State's office in that county. It wasn't necessarily voter fraud, but there were uh, unnecessary delays and a challenge in terms of conflict of law that we had to intervene and threaten um, litigation, and we ultimately ended up resolving that. And, and I will just add that it's really rare that we have uh, you know, legitimate fact-based allegations of voter fraud, but when and if we do, uh, when my office is made aware, we of course refer to the Attorney General's office and they've always taken very swift action. And of course our county clerks are able to do that and they do do that in their counties as well. But again, to agree with the Attorney General, in my knowledge, we did not have, I think, a, a single um, substantiated allegation of, of voter fraud in the 2020 election cycle. Awesome. Thank you guys. All good. Well, thank you all for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all so much. And yeah, we'll stick out. around if you have any other follow-ups. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Uh,